What's up everyone? Today we have a brand new lure for you. Now this isn't just any lure. This is the most popular bass lure of all time. I think. Don't quote me on that one. It's the rubber worm. Now, this isn't just any rubber worm. This is a ribbon tail worm. Do you know I got the ribbon tail? It's also special. It's chunky. So in all reality, this is just a three cavity worm mold that you guys can print for free. We're going to inject a couple later in the video so you guys can see how they come out. It is a little bit bigger, like I said. This is going to make it so bass can see it from farther away and hopefully get you guys more strikes. So we're going to get into print settings now and then we're going to shoot some. So you guys are going to want to slam this centered in your print bed facing upright. There's two mold halves. You're going to have to print them both separately because they're so big. I'm going to be using ABS to print this. You guys can use whatever material you want, but the higher temperature resistance, the better. So a good substitute would be PETG if you guys can't print an ABS, or PLA Plus might work too. You just have to be careful that the mold doesn't melt if you're using something that has a lower temperature resistance. So you're going to have to change a couple settings for this mold. I'm printing at a 0.12 layer height. That's going to give you the most detail. If you want to save some time, you can probably raise the layer height. You're just going to see a couple layer lines in it. But the most important settings are the wall, top, and bottom settings. These are going to add an extra layer of solid plastic around it, and it's going to help keep the plastic in and the heat in. So far, seven for each of them has been working good for me. But if you guys change what kind of plastic you're using, you might have to increase that number a bit. This mold is a pretty beefy print coming in at just over a day for each half. But that's all you guys really need to know about printing this. The file's free in the description. And we're going to get into shooting this mold a couple times now and see how it comes out. So these molds came out pretty good. I'm happy with the print quality and it's time to shoot these. The first thing we're going to do is going to grease each half really good up as good as we can. I'm just using pan baking spray. You guys can use like a real mold release if you want, but this works fine. Next, you're going to shake up your plastic saw, which I already did. And I'm using Denon Plastics Worm Blend. And we're just going to pour it into a Pyrex cup. And we're going to toss it into the microwave. I'm going to start off with like a minute 45. You want to heat this up to at least 350 degrees for it to cook right. And then we're going to add in our dyes. I'm going for some kind of like a motor oil-ish color. I'm going to see how it comes out. It should look pretty good. We're going to heat this up a few times and mix it up. Make sure it's nice and cooked before we shoot the mold. Now it's done. We're going to pull it. Oh, that's hot. Don't do that. Put your glove on and then we're going to pull it out. We're going to use our specialized stirring stick to stir that up. You can see by the color difference in the camera, it's starting to get cooked. It's not quite there yet. It's going to turn a clear color. It's still kind of sticky. We're going to shoot it with our temp gun. And we're at 209-ish. So I'm going to put it back in for another 45 seconds and we'll see you there. So now with our glove on this time, we're going to open this and we're going to stir it one more time and see where we're at. We're still not quite there, but we're close. So now we're going to set up the mold itself before we heat it up all the way. So I'm going to put this in a vise with these two blocks of wood on the side of it to protect the mold from cracking. I'm going to put these spring clamps on now to seal the rest of the mold up. So now we're going to finish heating our plastic all up and making that. It's still a little chunky. So we're probably going to have to cook it a bit longer. Just under our target of 350. I like to shoot a bit over temperature when I'm making this plastic. You just want to heat it up all the way and these Shinsi thermometers aren't that accurate. So it's better to go a little over than under. This should be done now. Also, it should be common sense, but don't do this in a microwave you put food in. It's looking pretty good now. It feels pretty good. 371. We're going to want to let this cool down a little bit anyway, so that'll give us some time to mix the dyes up. We're just going to add a few drops at a time until we get to the right number and mix it in between each.
You can always add more drops and you can't take more out though, so just be careful. We're going to add in our pearlescent effect now. And give this thing a good stir. We're going to add in a little bit of flake now. Stir that in good so it mixes evenly. I don't know how good you guys can see it, but that's a pretty decent color I'm happy with. The plastic pulled down a little too much, so I'm just going to give it one more zap before I shoot the mold. This plastic's the perfect temperature now, so I'm going to draw it into my injector that's frozen. There we go. Let it drip a little bit back in. I know you guys can't see that, but then we're going to put it in the top of the mold. And we're going to push down until we feel that it's full. And then we're going to hold pressure there just a little bit for about 10 seconds. And we're going to pull the injector out and then fill up the hole in the top. Top it off. Wait to see if it drains anymore. And that looks like it's good. So we're going to shoot this back in. And I'll see you guys in like 30 or so minutes when everything hardens up. While we're waiting for everything to cool down, we're going to go over the first two molds I screwed up. So this is version number one. The tail is way too small for this body. I also cracked the mold a few times, so it's kind of hard to see. But you can really see it up here where the plastic is physically melted inside the mold itself. You can see this tail is way too small for this worm body, so I didn't really think it was going to work out too good. Then in version 2, the tail was a lot nicer, but still not quite big enough for me. And we scaled up for the third and final version. So this mold's done now. We're going to pop it open and see how it came out. You want to slowly crack this open so you don't rip anything, because those tails are pretty fragile. Especially with this super soft plastisol I'm using. So I'm also going to peel off this top because this is holding it together. I don't think these tails are quite greased up enough because they're kind of hard to get off, but they still came out really well. Now we have our full mold shot here. We're just going to snip off these little bits right here. You guys can see that. And then we're going to let them sit for 24 hours and they should be done. So yeah, I think this came out pretty darn good. I really like the way the body looks with the tail and I'm also a big fan of the color. Feel free to comment on what I should uh, make next. And thank you guys for watching.